All right, hi, St. Martins. My name is Henry Stanton. And I'm Mikhail Rofe. And we're both M1s at Georgetown University School of Medicine. And we're just here to give you a quick talk before the holidays on how to eat healthy and stay healthy. So first is a little precursor. We just want to talk about food around the holidays. It's a time to eat and we do eat a lot. Every Thanksgiving, we sell and consume about 40 million turkeys. It's about half of the total annual number of turkeys that are sold in the US. And we eat another quarter of that at 22 million every Christmas. Another thing to talk about is the recommended daily average caloric intake, which is how much you're supposed to eat roughly in terms of calories every day. Now, these numbers vary according to height, weight, exercise, and age, and many other factors. But generally, the U.S. recommends that adult men eat about 2,500 calories per day, and that adult women consume about 2,000 calories. But in contrast, a single Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner can often add up to 3,000 to 4,000 or even more calories per person. So the energy needed to burn a pound of fat is equal to about 3,500 calories. So you can think that you've gained a pound just by eating that one meal, which is a lot more than we normally consume. Right, and so there's a number of reasons why healthy eating matters and why it's important. Um, and so one of these is maybe one of the main ones is that it lowers our risk of um, some chronic health problems that we may face. So some of the big ones are heart disease, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, and even some forms of cancer. And diet has been directly linked into a number of these um, with diabetes, you think um, sugar intake, high blood pressure, um, uh, salt has been shown, heart disease with uh, red meat or some of just some of those that you may have heard of. And it's also important for maintaining a healthy body weight, um, not only to feel good about ourselves and how we look, but also, um, again, for avoiding some chronic health complications. Um, uh, it's also been linked to improvements in mood and energy um, that uh, have to do with our, um, um, not just in, in how we look, but also in um, uh, what, the, what, uh, what we're taking in is um, what it's actually doing to our bodies. Um, a general approach for healthy eating is to include lots of uh, vegetables, fruits, beans, nuts, and whole grains in our diet and limiting the number of red and processed meats, um, on, uh, processed foods, unhealthy fats, um, sugar, salt, and alcohol, which can be hard for a number of uh, reasons, be them um, financial, be it taste, be it time, be it convenience. Um, but um, at the end of the day, we have to consider what is most important to us and uh, why we wanna do the decisions that we're doing. Um, so of these factors and maybe even more, um, it's worth considering um, uh, why um, you may want to um, change what you're eating or um, stay consistent with um, some type of eating plan. So um, an interesting consideration to make here um, is uh, one of calorie density. And so while eating healthy doesn't necessarily uh, mean not eating a lot, um, discussions of calorie and uh, health often go hand in hand. And so um, the main idea that I want to get across here is that not, not all calories are equal. Um, and that idea um, comes from the fact that food takes up different space in the stomach. That means that they have uh, varying density. And generally, um, low density foods will contain fewer calories uh, uh, per space that they take up. Um, and so, which means that when you eat lower density foods, you're going to fill full with fewer calories. And so that idea um, can be shown with a number of common foods on this chart on the right. And so a food like vegetables and fruits up at the top, whole grains um, are going to make you feel full with fewer calories, um, which means that, um, uh, again, with those recommended um, calorie counts, 2,500 um, for um, the average adult male, 2,000 for female, it, it, uh, uh, and achieving those that, that may be um, more realistic in cases as opposed to those higher density foods, which can be unhealthy as seen towards the bottom. We're looking at hamburgers, chocolate, uh, uh, butter, oil, and yeah. So, um, and also, um, it's important to consider that when you're intaking calories, um, you're using that for your day-to-day -day exertion. And so this um, image on the bottom is showing the idea that um, while you're taking calories, you're also um, using those uh, depending on um, what you need to do in exercise. And so, yeah. 
Um, um, this is just a nice visualization of this idea. And so something like mac and cheese, which is a staple in most Thanksgiving meals is um, for 250 calories on average, that's gonna be eight tenths of a measurement, measuring cup. But when you compare that to something like Brussels sprouts, which is very low density food, which also has a lot more uh, nutritional value, uh, you can see that that takes uh, six and a half cups. And so think of those cups um, sitting in your stomach, your stomach is fixed amount of space. And so that's um, something that I like to think about when considering what I'm eating and um, how it's impacting my um, health and weight. All right. And so instead of just lecturing at you about uh, dieting facts. We also wanted to offer up some tips for how you can change your diet or think about changing your diet in the kitchen. So the first step is to think about making good substitutions in cooking. Um, first step, which is to know which ingredients you can or should replace and which ones you really shouldn't. So it's always easy to think about whether you should use a healthier version of the same ingredient instead of uh, the less healthy option. So you might choose brown rice instead of white rice or looking for a reduced fat product instead of the full fat product. You can generally use those as ingredients in a one-to-one -one ratio, or if it's, it's food on its own, then you, know, you can just go with the healthier option. Another example is in replacing an ingredient in a recipe. Uh, gravy, for example, in Thanksgiving, um, you know, I usually make that with flour and butter, um, pan drippings, uh, some kind of stock, maybe chicken stock or turkey stock, and then cream as a thickener. But, um, you know, if you're looking to have a reduced calorie kind of that gravy, you can keep the stock and maybe swap out the flour or even swap out some of the cream with a cornstarch slurry. So that'll thicken it in the same way and give it that same kind of texture without really reducing much of the flavor. Another way that you can make a substitution is to change the proportions of dishes. So one example might be to use more of a healthy ingredient and less of an unhealthy one. So when you're stuffing or in a casserole, you could increase the amount of vegetables you have and decrease the amount of carbohydrates like uh, grains, your, your bread in a stuffing. And you can also mix up the dishes you make. So this is a bit of a hot take, but I personally don't know anyone that actually likes sweet potato casserole that much. So instead, you could think about bringing or eating something different for the holiday. Another thing to talk about is the common adage that fat is flavor. And this is kind of true. Reducing the amount of fat you cook with can reduce calories very easily, but it might also reduce the amount of flavor you're tasting. Fat is a really important factor in browning meats and in baking pastries. So for example, your pumpkin pie. Uh, it also helps trap and deliver flavor molecules that you might otherwise lose in cooking. So it makes that flavor more intense. You may find that you need to increase the amount of seasoning that you add to a recipe in order to replace any fat that you subtract. So that's something to maybe trial out before the holiday comes. Another thing you can do about fat is to check what kind of fat you're using. So there are two kinds, there's unhealthy and healthy fats. Healthy fats are usually unsaturated, whereas unhealthy fats are usually saturated. And in the case of processed foods, uh, a lot of the time those are trans fats. So some substitutions you can make are using olive, canola, and vegetable oils instead of something like shortening, which is very, very saturated, or even something like butter, which is less saturated, but still not quite as healthy as those vegetable oils. Another option would be fish or poultry instead of red meat, or even uh, something like white meat or light meat in the turkey as opposed to dark meat. And things like nuts and seeds, which can be a, a much healthier snack than processed foods. Right, and finally, we just wanted to end with the idea of portion control, which is um, the idea of not only washing what you're eating, but also how much. And so this can happen either when you're preparing the food, but even after it's done, when you're organizing it or um, putting it onto your plate. And so kind of the first idea here, um, seen in this figure on the right, is that you can use that's when you use a smaller plate, naturally you're gonna put less food in it and maybe even eat less. And then um, again, with the idea of diversity, different foods have different nutritional values. And so you want um, a good mix um, within that plate. Um, separate from that, there's another idea that when you're preparing it, you can use certain rules of thumb to um, get um, um, kind of the desired amounts that you want um, for um, 
in, in your meal. And so um, as shown here on the right, there's um, this rule of thumb with uh, nuts, with oils, with butters, and then um, uh, you can use uh, a fist for um, um, showing uh, what about one half of a cup is that you can use for um, some of the grains that you may want to intake. And um, yeah, and so this is just a general strategy that if you that you can use when um, you want to take healthy eating seriously. So yeah, that's right. all we had. But thank yeah. you for your time. That's our whole thing. Thanks so much, and happy Thanksgiving.